Hi, and welcome back to That's So Nova. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for um, Alexa's new bag pattern, which the owner, of, owner and designer of Aura Rosa, um, is the Monica Carryall bag, or Monica Carryall bag. Um, this bag is very interesting because there's different levels of structure in, in it to provide it to have a more structured silhouette or a little bit softer. Um, it's kind of like an adventure bag. There's a lot of optional stuff, whether you want to put purse feet, um, D-rings. There's a whole genre of different things that are optional. If you want to put caps at the end of your straps, or if you want name tags. Alexis has a tier system, which is three, from one being the easiest and three being the hardest. This is level two, adventurous intermediate. So with that being said, when you're when you're kind of like an intermediate in my mind, is that you're familiar with putting in zippers, pockets, you are familiar with um, you know, right sides out, turning inside out of bag, inside out of bag, and making sure you know your measurements. So we're gonna begin with at the beginning. There's the cut chart that has the whole, all the pattern pieces are pretty much measured out except the side stabilizer. So side, the side and the side stabilizer. Um, there, there are very specific instructions on the stabilizer. And that is on page, let's see, page nine. So with this, I, I have this being a very bright, bright, um, a bright, let's go right here, this is a bright pink. It's a highlighter, it could come off with heat. Um, it's a friction highlighter. So this part has to be a half inch down and a half an inch on each um, side seam so nothing gets caught in the actual seam allowance. But with this being said, one thing I can definitely tell you to do is please mark your centers on your front and on your back. I use a Tandy pen. This one is from um, Warmino, Lauren. And I mark your centers on everything in the back. It will make your lives loads of easier <laughs> than you're not trying to fold things and manipulate things during the pattern. Another piece that has stabilizer is the body, the body back stabilizer. It has very specific um, measurements too, of coming in at 7 8 of an inch and being, I think, put on a half inch down. All these measurements are very important to keep the structure of the bag. So Alexis has us using Peltex. In my original bag that I made, which you will see later on, um, later on this week if you're in the group, I used Peltex and it was amazing. Um, it made me like really love it again. I have a love-hate relationship with that. Because there's a, definitely wrinkle, like wrinkles. But with that being said, I ran completely out. I put in a, a, a Joanne order where it was curbside. I put it in at 9 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, I got the email. And I'm excited because I'm like, hey, my husband did this on his way home. And they're like, er, no, we don't have any. So I called the store and they're like, no, we can't find the bolt. So we can't fulfill the order. So I called, I messaged Alexis and we kind of try to figure out what we can use as a stabilizer. Because you're going to use Peltex in the bottom of the bag and when you eventually get to the front of the bag. And if you want even sturdier bag, you're going to use two layers of Peltex in the front. So what I decided to do for the bottom of this bag, because this is um, marine vinyl, is I used um, one layer of Decoville Heavy, one layer of Decoville Light, and I used some foam that you get at the Home Depot. It's sticks really well to it. And since the bag is not being manipulated where you're trying to pull the whole bag out of a pocket, this will work really well. I put together already the feet of this purse. You poke your holes in the measurements. The measurements are going to be on page 10. You poke the holes of your measurements and you can choose between having no purse feet, four or five. I want five because I just like the way it sounds. <laughs> Um, also with this, 
on page nine, Alexis gives you information if you're using a, a sew-in woven where you would mark your panel um, in the center and go down four and a half inches and put your, your sew-in label there. And you would put a piece of Decoville on the back of it so that way it could stay secure. I like that option. I actually use that option, but we're going to use, um, I'm going to use a metal tag tonight. So we're going to start, and we're going to start with page, it starts on page 11. I know I'm saying we're starting on page 11, but let me just make something clear. I always tell people, read the whole entire pattern. If you are, if you are like busy and you have children, or you're, or you're like, if you're like me, I have children during the day. So during the day, I'm usually having my Bermuda sewing machine and I sew linings up front. So I would sew the pocket, I would sew the zipper pocket and the slip pocket and everything and make all my markings. Um, there's three sections of the bag and you can work one section at a time. You can do it one step at a time, whatever's easier for you. Like particularly in this pattern, one of the last, one of the last things you do is make your straps and we're so accustomed to making our straps first that sometimes when something gets thrown at us like making your straps be last it throws us off um so do read the pattern that's why i think they always say read through the pattern once before you cut out any material then i would tell you to read through it again and highlight areas that you know could be difficult for you um so that way it won't be difficult and you're following exactly what you need to make this pattern, this bag, as comfortable and beautiful as you need it to be. So we're going to start, we're going to get the two main exterior pieces. And what you're going to see is when I am, I'm a person that draws out the three eighths of an inch every single time. It's something I do. <laughs> I don't, I'm not too sure why, but I, I do. I just it just makes my life easier, I think. So I'm going to match these two lines to make sure that they are that everything is even. And I'm going to pop a few clips. This bag does it, it takes a lot of clips in some situations. Okay, I'm going to use my other ruler to the side. So it's going to be 3 eighths of an inch. I'm on my Juki 1541S. I'm using a, I will look at the needle right now as soon as I finish the stitch. Um, I am using a 90 weight superior thread black thread. I'm at a 4.5 stitch length. I don't think I have a big size needle on because this is not very thick material yet. <laughs> I always back stitch and I am using a 12520 um, needle. I get some the needles I get from Waywack, sometimes Amazon. It kind of depends. <laughs> um with this pattern, the the seams need to go towards towards um, seam the it, the this seam needs to go towards the panel the uh, the bottom panel. So we're going to braid. Sorry, I'm just knocking this out. Yeah. We're going to braid. The seam, and these are duckbill scissors. They're often used in applique, um, embroidery. I use a lot where I'm making um, dresses because you braid the seams. And we're doing something very similar. We're braiding down the seam so that way it can create less bulk.
and it gives it a nice clean closure. Even though this is not a frame fabric, it just, it's nice to have your um, seams sometimes in case. So I'm going to take this over here and top stitch and I'm going to finger press and move my scissors. This is, despite this being a big machine, the work area is so small. <laughs> so, so small. Just a second. So, I'm going to hold my thread and I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch. And I'm sewing on the, the, the bottom base of the bag. I'm not using any um, low size tape. You could if you wanted to, but the because of the cutting my cutting and kind of pancaking the seam down, it wants to lay flat. And I'm still at a 4.5. My water. <laughs> And we're going to do the same thing to the other side and you can see that this this is a nice size bag it's not little by any means and i kind of i kind of love that i am a person that likes big guys because i stick everything in it and i have a lot of things and even if i didn't have a lot of things i just like having a big guy <laughs> have you know the options Creates of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch. I like to do, do like one or two. Sometimes it all depends on the fabric. When it's by all vinyl, I like to do um, two, maybe three. If it's woven or canvas, oh man, I will backstitch the whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to trim these seams with these blue scissors just so you can see that you, you don't need duck bill scissors, it's just something or something that I always have around. I find them incredibly useful. Mm -hmm. You're just cutting one seam at one eighth of an inch, not cutting into the stitches. So all this could be in case. to hold on to my threads and top stitch up one eighth of it one piece away. I'm really excited to see how this bag turns out. I really love this fabric. <laughs> okay. I was trying to find the most matte black vinyl so that I can just like really pop off. So th this vinyl is a vinyl I, I always get from fabric.com. It seems like my I like the, the vinyl 
the black vinyl there the best. I don't know why. But also sometimes, occasionally, Joanne's has like a vinyl that, a black vinyl I like in their home decor um, area too. I'm just going underneath and just making sure that the seam stays flat. all your threads so we did that part I'm gonna put this aside we're gonna grab um we're gonna to take we're gonna sew this gel in the back so we need the interior main piece and then we're gonna get drawing some lines now as you can see I drew many of the lines for you in black so that way it can stand out the lines are super important um, so the first line you're going to do is you need to make sure that you're one and one fourth of an inch away from, it's just make like a one and a half inch box in your head. So they need to, your, your the sides, <laughs> okay, you need to come down one inch, one and a half inches, and this is where you're going to start and end, one and a half inches on both sides. You're going to measure up one and a half inches. And then when you do that, you're creating this nice U. So from the, um, your mark centers, like I told you in the beginning to mark all your centers, you're going to connect the line. From there, you're going to go two inches from each side, and then you're going to go one inch. So two inches on this side and one inch. So the next thing we, we do after that, That all that is coming. <laughs> I like that in her patterns. It, it's funny to me because like you're sewing along with her and you're doing it like it's coming along. You're probably a third of the back way through. Woo -hoo! Um, I love that. It just it, it makes me smile. So we're gonna go on page 14. So after we drew these lines, we're going to flip, find our center marks here, draw it down, and then we're gonna do a seven and a half inch line that is one and a half inch away from each side and put your double sided tape. When you have that done, you're going to grab the bag exterior, the one that you made that has the two pieces, you're going to grab your bag exterior and you're going to put this on this. So before we do that, I like to, the measurement is super important that it needs to come down to three, four, three fourths of an inch. So I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to line up. I'm just going to draw a small line in Tandy with this Tandy leather pen to show where three fourths of an inch is. So that way when I, when I match my, um, markings, everything will line up smoothly. Again, you don't have to draw the lines at all. It's not necessary. It's not written in the pattern that way. It's just something that I do. It helps me visualize what I'm doing and it makes the bag process a little bit easier for me. So let's see. What I'm going to do before I take off this tape, I, what I'm going to do is you mark, I mark the center on this side, but not on here. So let me go ahead and say what I'm, what I'm teaching <laughs> and do it. So I'm going to mark my center by folding it in half. It's, it's, it's 12 inches. So your center should be six, but you can always, I just, Fold in half just makes me feel secure, just in case it's like one and one sixteenth off or something. So this is how I line it up at the three fourths of an inch line, and I'm like, okay, good, that's good. And then you do the same thing on the other side. One, and then here's your center line here. Here's your center line there. I'm gonna take my double-sided tape off. It has a lot of green fur. 
I make Christmas stockings, <laughs> and I get a lot of requests for the Grinch Christmas stocking. So when I make it, I'm like super excited because it's the holidays. But somehow, some way, the Grinch never leaves. <laughs> never. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> so before, I'm not pressing it down yet because I want to mark to make sure that all my centers are lined up before I press it down in place. The measurements here are kind of crucial. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the, the next step. The next step is we are going to you press you're going to press down we press on the DSD and the three-fourths of an inch left showing, we're going to sew one-eighth of an inch. I mean, one, uh, one-eighth of an inch. We're going to sew across this first box. Okay? Back stitching is super important in this step. And just follow the line. Okay. I'm going to hold my towel threads and I'm going to start. I'm still at that 4.5. That's kind of my sweet spot for the bag. When you make sure you stop at a needle down position. threads all right this part when I first when I first read I was like they, she wants me to do what <laughs> we're going to cut out the box we're going to leave one eighth of an inch around in the in, inner side the inner side the inside of the box so you'll be fine. Now, you, there's a couple things you can do. You can just like eyeball it, do that one eighth of an inch. Or if you're like me, that's like, oh my God, I have to cut out this one eighth of an inch. And <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> well, one, you're not alone. Um, two, I have this, I use in every video, I always talk about the Strix and Westcott rulers because they their boxes are one eighth of an inch so like so when there's a measurement that says seven eighth of an inch or three fourths of an inch it's so easy for me to find because i know each box represents one one eighth of an inch so i'm going to go from the stitching line and i'm just drawing um one eighth of an inch box and that's what i'm going to do my basis for um cutting So it's nice and pink, and I know this is the scary part, but you got it. 
It will all make sense in just a moment. So I'm taking my time. I'm cutting, I'm cutting that pink line. Leaving that one eighth of an inch. Make sure you have sharp scissors. That that's key. I'm just cutting that pink line. I just almost stabbed myself to get an arm. Okay, so in all fairness, I feel like it's not a bag unless I draw blood. I know this sounds weird. <laughs> Either I gotta get hit with a needle, a pair of scissors, something. Oh, Steam Ripper loves my skin. Like, <laughs> with all its little heart. So I'm just gonna go into the area where I kind of went off the pink and I, you can obviously see it's a little bit more than one eighth of an inch. I'm just trimming it. Okay. The next thing we need to do, which is super important, we're going to now stitch this U. This is going to create the inner inside hidden pockets. Um, and then we're also going to mark in the box a three eighth of a box, three eighth of a three eighths of an inch box at each corner, because this is going to be a start and stop point to our next thing we do on the bag. But that's first let's do the um, this hidden slip pockets. Make sure you backstitch really, really well at the beginning and end of each stitch because that's a lot of pressure this is going to have for it to be a slip pocket. There will be a rivet, but you want that extra security. So backstitch in the beginning really, really well. Make sure you stop at that needle down position. Now, I know you're probably thinking, hey, you're on a Juki um, industrial machine, and that's why you're able to sew through this. I, I actually use, I sew, this is my third bag. And I did an all vinyl bag on my um, Juki uh, 5550. 5550 is technically a garment bag. I also, also there's people that are testers in the group that use this on the domestic. Alexis has a really interesting way how you can make really structured bags on your domestic. Because at no point are you sewing through more than four layers of vinyl, except in the four layers of vinyl is your strap. <laughs> so it makes life a whole lot easier. I think my Bernina would like to use this. That, that's a um, 1008. I've sewn bags on that as well. I love that. I use it, I use it for mostly garments. But it does really beautiful bags. The stitches on that, that, that on the Bernina are just outrageous. Outrageous. It's my favorite stitch. I know that's, that's super weird to say, but I do have favorites. <laughs> Make sure you're back stitching the beginning and the end really well, because that is going to be a crucial point. Turning those threads. All right. Okay, so our next the next spot is going to be on page 16, we drew the 3 eighths of an inch box. We're going to now take the main panel, the main panel that we just did with the purse feet, I mean, the purse feet or the handbag feet, and we are going to just plop this <laughs> um, down. This is again where 
sensor marks are crucial because if you see this, I this sensor mark can go to this. I don't have a center mark there, so let me make center marks real quickly on this. And because it's still in its like infancy and it doesn't have any structure, it's easy to manipulate just folding it over and doing it. It's, it does save time. Sometimes the little steps can make the hugest difference in your bag or any sewing project. All right, so I have my, my marks. Let me plop this back on. <laughs> What I did, what I did for the first one is I found my centers of my bag. And I matched centers to center. So there's a pink, there's a pink line. I match all, I try to match all the centers first. I'm knocking down things with this big bag. Center to center. And the same I'm doing here. So we're gonna start clipping where Start clipping. Let's see. I, you know what? I know I did it wrong. Wrong side. I apologize. Happens. If you look in the pattern, the um, piece of your the black there should be one face down and black exposed, so it should look. I'll see all three later. So. I'm going to reclip the centers. <laughs> Third bag, and I'm, I'm telling you, it ha just happens. Sorry, I'm clip these centers of the first layer, leaving this. You're going to, when you clip the centers, you're going to take the center of this, leaving this alone, and you're going to match your center points and clip. So what, and a good indication of my mistake that you can see is that we need these three eighths of an inch to know where to begin and end our, our back stitching and where not to stitch. We're not stitching through this, um, this three eighths of an inch box. It's our stop and start point. So I put a clip on either side of both, I mean, both sides of the, um, where the stitch is going to be. And then I just kind of start clipping. This is a, this is going to be a, a process. It's probably, clipping's probably going to take longer than sewing, but everything's going to pan out and be worth it. And yet it's, this bag is constructed very unusual, very unique. It, it takes, it takes like lessons that you've learned in like making blankets and quilting, how to do miter corners and things along that line and brought it to give brought to a bag level and gives this bag a super sophisticated look. This bag is like, 
very high end and lush. When you see the testers bags, you guys are gonna flip because they are amazing. Like all the testers bags are absolutely gorgeous, and all the bags that Alexis made herself are gorgeous. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I in one of her lives for the group, she was saying that she this bag she was able to construct constructed on her um, low end, you know, brother's machine. And I absolutely love that. I love the fact that you're able to make this with any machine. Because like I said in the beginning, um, my, I have three kids. And when they're doing their things or they're in class, I whip out my brain and I start making bags. And it's a lifesaver to have someone that think how to make constructed, really constructed, like structure bags and not put a lot of wear and tear on your machine. Like this, I wouldn't even be thought of, like, I'm telling you, it's art. I always want to, like, know more on how, the de what are the designers thinking when they're making, the, making their creation? Because I never even would have thought of this, like, at all. But it was funny because when I made my first one, I messaged another fellow tester and I'm like, I'm not freaking out. I'm not freaking out because I've never done this before. But the instructions are so clear and it is all about figuring it out. So it looks really weird, <laughs> but it's going to pan out, I promise. So we're going to start with the three eighths of an inch. Um, you can draw your seam allowance or if you're like me, I have a little bit of donut wasabi tape right here. That marks the three eighths of an inch and we're going to go from there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to squish down this bag so you can see what I'm doing. It's going to be okay to squish your bag back down. There's no stabilizers. There's no, there's nothing in it yet to make it to where you can't squish it down. Move over clip so it doesn't move away. And I'm going to start. And you kind of want it like this, but I'm going to fold mine down so you can see. You need to take your time, just making sure all the raw edges stay together and that you follow that seam allowance. Pushing it down, moving it so that nothing gets like sewn that shouldn't get sewn. That's all right. You don't need like five clips, and the bag's also not need like. <laughs> going to snip threads. We've got one side down, three to go. And remember the, the other ones are just too short in. So you can sew both long ends first and then however, whatever's easier for you. I personally like to sew both long ends first and then do this the short ends. But that's again, personal preference. Thank you. 
making sure that raw, all the raw edges are together. And we are going to start on the short ends and pushing the, the fabric underneath itself, getting all squishy. <laughs> I was going to do like a Will Smith getting squishy with it, but I felt like that would be too <laughs> Um, Let's see. Creates of an inch. I can get stickers saying you can't get squishy with it because I'm all about squishy bags. Threads. When you're done with them, they kind of have like, they look like little dog ears, like, or um, Elmo or um, <laughs> a gizmo. Like, I don't know, it's kind of cute. <laughs> Let's get this other side started. Okay, this now becomes the fun part because we're going to be using a lot of double sided tape and duct tape. I know, it sounds weird and complicated, but I'm just knocking a lot of stuff down. It's cool, I don't need it, and it's not me if I'm not clumsy. So, <laughs> we're going to first, we're going to put these dog ears um, and draw a 45 degree angle. Uh, I have like favorite rulers for each thing. This has a nice one. I'm using um, WTF fractions. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of really like this one because it had it marks. It has all the markings of like three eighths of inch, five eighths, seven eighths, like one eighth, and I'm just like that's pretty awesome. So. What you do is you're going to clip your dog ears or your Elmo ears, whatever you want to call it, baby Yoda ears, and we are going to measure we're going to measure I'm just we're gonna try to get the, this even as possible because that gives you the best line. We're going to measure from where our stitches stop. And I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use this small cutting mat as to find my center to keep it lined up. I'm going to put it on a line, like 
this works better if you're at your table your table and you're doing the grid thing, but we're gonna do this. Hey, we're going to do it while we're on our sewing table because we're cool like that. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to put this on the line. I know I look really awkward, but it will all work out, I promise. <laughs> we are going to draw a 45 degree angle, and I'm just using the Omnigrid or you can use the other um, fraction, and you're going to connect the stitch line, your last stitch. And draw this angle. And then you're going to do a three eighths of an inch. I always get the long. I have like a hundred of these rulers, and there are short ones. But for some reason, these massively big ones are the one I gravitate to. We're going to do a box. So we're going to stitch. Right here, the most important thing is not to go past the row of stitching that you already did. So that's one. This is when you're going to get weird and squishy. <laughs> it's weird at first, but then it all makes sense. <laughs> We're going to hit this 45 degree angle right where our stitch last line of stitching is. Draw. Awkwardly put a 3 eighths of an inch box. If you hear snoring in the background, that's my dog. Apparently, she's super comfortable while I'm filming. <laughs> And I think her snores, she's whistling out of her nose, because at first I thought it was maybe my husband's phone, but the more I pay attention, the more I realize it's my dog. Let's see. Keeping this at a right angle. 45 degrees. Matching stitches. Awkwardly trying to draw a three inch box, three inch box with the 18 inch ruler. And we have one more. I was like, Alexis is bringing me back. I feel like whenever I do a pattern with her, I'm not, I'm not do a pattern. Whenever I test a pattern with her, let me correct that. I feel like I'm in school and I'm learning a lesson. Like she teaches techniques that I don't see in a lot of bag making. And it, it, it really does interest me because it's, it's, it's unusual. So I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to sew. These boxes, so these lines do not go past, do not sew above the row of stitching. Get your bag squishy and get it flat as possible on both sides before you stitch. There should be any ripples underneath your finger. If they are, just reposition it. It's better to do it now than to try to rip out stitches later. And I'm going to back stitch. Now I'm going to back stitch. 
do the same thing on this side. Have it flat as possible. You're just connecting the previous stitching that you did across. Not going above it. Or one side below it. Get all those strings. What, I, what happens to me notoriously is that I won't cut out cut strings out. And then when I'm sewing, automatically the other strings that are floating around on my table get caught and then it makes this weird mess. And I don't like it when it does that. Get this baby ruler out. Stitching below. I know it's really tempting to go above the whole line up. Just say below my stitches. It'll be easy breezy. And then we have this last one. After we, drew, we stitched down, but right after we stitched down, we made the little boxes. We are going to cut this seam at three eighths of an inch, not one fourth, not one eighth, three eighths of an inch. Um, if you drew the box, the boxes like you're supposed to, then um, it's exactly at three eighths of an inch. You can just kind of follow that line and just cut off, and then make sure you trim into that box, leaving at least one eighth of an inch. You can draw your three eighths of an inch line too if you wish. It doesn't hurt. beautiful triangles because I can repurpose these and put them aside and then we're going to take our roller on the 45 degree angle and draw a line on that angle to make it you already drew a line that's up here. We're just drawing a line on the side because the, we're going to start trimming those sides. I might have to restitch this one real quick because I accidentally had it folded. But we caught it before we need to. Fix this real quick. I'm gonna stop right where the top of the seat. Alright. Get 
Okay. So we're going to continue on put the um the ruler at 45 degree uh, the 45 degree angle and draw where the stitches meet that straight line because you're just doing that real quick on each side and on that side and on this. It's basically drawing our cut line where we're, we're going to trim, and that's important. All right, so we're going to trim where the line is at one eighth of an inch to one point one eighth of an inch without dropping the pattern. It just helps with the seam. So you're just going to cut into where you have drawn, where it's drawn. It's on the, the front and the back. And then just trimming it to like one eighth of an inch of that way. Get the, this back to lay as flat as it possibly can. And this is just the outer layer. Better easy, smaller. Yeah, smaller is definitely better on this. Position it to where it's going to be easy for you. Don't cut into the other layer. Just one. Okay. Let me get all this. <laughs> Hanging it onto the floor. So, what we're going to do next is the taping game. All right. <laughs> so, I'm going to put all the double sided tape on all of the three eighths of an inch seam. I'm using one fourth of an inch. I'm kind of just pressing it on on the way why I like to put all the double side tape on first before I start um I'm feeling Double side tape is definitely needed in this, especially duct tape. Um, I have like this pretty mermaid duct tape that we're going to be using. It completely and utterly sucks. I'm going to be 100% honest. Is it gorgeous? Yes. But there's something about the silver duct tape that has like the actual stick to it. Think of it like this. You most likely have used Drake's wash away um, tape. It does stick, right? But it doesn't stick like leather tape. So it's kind of that scenario. So I'm wearing my fingers, making sure that it's, it's all sticky. And then I'm going to press the seams down. And 
and I'm going to use a roller to get these seams really flat. But I want to have it all pressed down first. Yeah, I'm really disappointed because I was like, yay, it's pretty duct tape. It's going to look awesome. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, that's exactly what it is. It's pretty duct tape, but it's not awesome. <laughs> and maybe it's the coloring on it. I don't know. That makes it look less sticky. I was trying to figure out for the, like all day today why it wasn't sticky. So I have a metal roller. I can link this in um, in the description box or uh, in the comments if you want to know. It's from Amazon. Um, I use this a lot because I like to work with wax canvas and you can't iron wax canvas so you press it with the roller. Then I'm going to take um, some double-sided tape and I'm going to go across this seam. With it. I'm doing the same thing, just finger pressing as I'm putting the um, double sided tape on. This is the last seam that needs to the side tape. And this does take time. Take your time. Get this get get it all together. Because it's gonna be well worth it when you when you turn this back out right now, you're gonna be like, I did this because I know I said that. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I did this? This is amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to finger press. Some tapes are so much stickier than the others, too. I, I tried a new a new tape, and I'm not really like it. It's surprising came from a leather shop. I'm not liking it right now. I do like the one off of Amazon from Springfield Leather, I think. That leather, like, it's it literally sticks to me. Like, if it's on me, I can't get it off for <laughs> a minute. But then... It does gum up my needles. It's like there's no happy medium. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this with the seam roller to get as flat as I possibly can before I use to go in with the duct tape. Because we're about to do that. I'm just going to roll. table onto my foot. That has happened so many times too. Mm -hmm. Alright. So with the double-sided tape, 
we're going to put this around the whole the whole the whole box. Now you're gonna leave one eighth of an inch for your top stitching. You can draw out one eighth of an inch if that makes you feel more secure, because I would do it, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And we're going to basically put this in this the area to help hold down the seams. Super pretty to look at them. <laughs> press this too. See, I didn't put it one eighth, one eighth of an inch because I want, um, I did a little bit more because I know we're going to be threading like our, okay, um, our, our um, just like ripped in one area because it's that easy to rip. <laughs> um, threading our thread, our top stitching threads, and I don't want the, to hit accidentally hit the duct tape because the duct tape does have a lot of glue and adhesive on it, and it can be hard to get the needle in, depending on what label you're using. Alright, and I'm just going to like roll this real quick. Because I when we turn this back, I don't want any of the seams to come undone. Not the stitching, but like the taping to make because this we're trying to make this as flat as possible so we can have a nice miter corner. Alright. So we have this, and what we're gonna do. We're going to turn this bag inside out from this hole. So you can just grab an end. And turn the bag. If your vinyl is sticky, it might be a little bit of a process, but this is a really wide birthing hole, so it should be... It should come pretty good. See how we have half of it birth and half of it not? There's not much working after this. <laughs> stick my hand in there and I am just going to poke out the corners with my fingers at first and then I will have um, I have a bone finger chopstick whatever is that your area that you can do and something that's not blunt that could poke out the air the corners really well I'm going to be using a chopstick that was provided to me by my husband. Mm -hmm. That's him laughing. <laughs> so I'm going to poke these corners out. I'm just putting it in the corner, um, making sure that I get the corners as nice and crisp as I can, but not poking a hole through it. And this bag is going to be fabulous. <laughs> like, it's a pretty bag. All right. So as you can see, we poked out our corners. We have a, the exterior of our bag. We have our hidden slip pocket. How beautiful that is. This is absolutely gorgeous. You have your slip pocket to stick your cell phone in. And look at these minor corners. 
these corners are amazing. She's a genius. That that that's I'm declaring it. Everyone should know it. This is beautiful. I have never seen this with any other bag before, and I'm really excited about it. Okay, so we're gonna go back to. We're gonna start with. We're gonna be on page. 21. We're going to do the sides. It's going to feel weird because you're like, I'm not connecting this because this is done. You're right. We're connecting this. This is where we have, we're having the matching points on your top and your exterior pay off. So you're going to take it. This is it. The first, this stays floppy because we're not sewing it. And we are clipping. I like to clip on the top and then on the side just to keep that in that position matching all raw edges I'm doing the same thing So we are going to make sure that your exterior is out of the way and we're going to continue to clip. All the way around. Use as many or as few clips as you want. Um, it is suggested in pattern that you can use staples. I don't use staples. Okay, I'm like, if a superpower was an accident, man, I'll be ruling the world. <laughs> I I am accident prone, and it's okay. I'm aware of it. <laughs> um, so I try to do things that won't injure me, like staples. <laughs> Suddenly, I'll be screaming for my husband. I have one in my eye, and then <laughs> it's it's that it ha it just happens with me. I'm okay with it though. I'm okay. It's just part of my part of my day to day life. <laughs> so no staples for me. Um, I I will use a a, a plethora of different clips. So I'm an over clipper. Like I said, just make sure your exterior is completely out of the way. If there's a pucker, you know, try to try to bend it out with um, like kind of like spread the ease throughout the bag so that there's not ripples. Because this this is gonna be the side of the bag, and you don't want ripples on the side. Alright, so we're going to sew this at 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. Still have the same stitch at 4.5. When I did it on my other machine, I was at a stitch length of 3.5. Each machine I have like, like a, this is my favorite stitch at the moment. Start going around this curve. Again, it's okay to get your bag all squishy. Make sure there's no ripples. Needles always down in the position when you stop.
one. We'll move to the other side. We're going to do matching. Push down this exterior fabric and grab the main body. Matching. Then I always go to the top. I like to stick one clip. I like to stick one clip horizontally and, and vertically. It just, I don't know, it's a weird method. It just works for me. This bag comes together relatively quickly. I feel like um, the cut, like the cut time, I, it differs. Some people can cut all day long and they have no issues. It takes me forever and a day to cut out measurements because I will sit there and look at the ruler a hundred million times, second guessing myself. <laughs> um, you can do a few things. You can do the measurements on a piece of paper and that could be your template, especially if you're trying to like fussy cut like, let's say a panel. So do it on a piece of paper and you have your pattern piece. Then. Which I believe I, yes, I did that for, um, my tester bag is a leather hide bag. And because of the hide, it has like this like variant of different browns and black. And I wanted to get a particular spot. So I created a paper template. So that way I was able to bust it back. This is where, when people staple, this is where it comes in hand. Because you could just staple the area and keep it pressing. And you just do it within your seam allowance. Like you staple it, I believe, one fourth of an inch. And you go for it. And then you have no clips in your way. I'm going to start on this. the raw edges together, back stitch, your needles down. A purple thing or a stiletto can help too. I've never used a purple thing. I've seen it used and it looks pretty cool. But I, I do like stilettos. Um, I use them quite often actually. I'll get into that to the curve area so I'm maneuvering my back so that there's no like ripples. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So when we're done with this, we're going to paint these pinkies here all the way around except the one inch, one inch on the top. So what you can do, because we're, we're going to flatten the seams anyways, is I, I'm going to stick tape right. You can, whatever's easier for you, you can just measure one inch. And just, I'm going to put tape at the one inch mark. So I know not to cut there. You don't have to put um, tape there at all, DSD. I just feel I, I feel like with vinyl, since we cannot press the seam open and we need the seam open, just to put double-sided tape or wash away tape, whatever you have handy. Um, heck, uh, you can use a glue stick. Right now, glue sticks are really, really cheap because kids are going back to school. Um, you can use a glue stick, that like the ones that go purple, and then... Um, they dry clear, so you can put the glue stick right here on the one eighth of an inch, put two wonder clips, and let it dry, and then go ahead with your painting. That is always an option. So I'm going to pink. I'm going to pink this to one eighth of an inch. Let me triple check, but I believe it's one eighth of an inch. Yes, to one eighth of an inch. Do not hit any of your stitches. You don't want anything to... You, you, I mean, it's fixable, but it will it'll, it'll be like stressful. <laughs> These are Kai Pinking Shears um, N5350. I got them on Apple of Amazon. Um, there is a person by the name, in our sewing community, her name is Galva, and she actually recommended to me, and they are like my all time favorite pinking shears, and they have a really nice soft handle. They are expensive, I'm not gonna lie, but they were, they're definitely one of a splurge, per, uh, a splurge that. I think is is amazing. Just making sure I'm not hitting any stitches. I keep lifting up my my interfacing with the scissors. <laughs> All right. So then we're going to hurt this one more time, bring the right sides, look, we're going to hurt it where this, it, this can go inside out. So we have this inside out. And let's see. This is so what we're gonna work what we have right now is the outer shell of our whole entire bag. Let me straighten this one out. Okay. 
and this is looking so good. So, I this tutorial is going to be improvising the next steps of just alternate materials because I ran out of material scenario. That, is, that happens to me a lot. We're going to start working on the lining. Alright, so the, I'm just not going to down. With the lining piece, you're going to be making a slip pocket. You're going to be sewing the slip pocket right sides together, three to the inch, leaving a two inch hole or whatever hole size you think is right for you. And then you're going to turn right side out. You're going to top stitch it um, either at one fourth of an inch or one eighth of an inch. And we're going to take this top stitch, this bag, and we are going to mark it so it is three and a half inches up. And so what I like to do is I like to do center creases, finger, have a nice crease. I'm going to do the same thing with this line. I have a line that is here. Because I can't put a pin in this, um, you can use sew tights. They're, they're used a lot in quilting, but they're also great utilization for situations like this. You can't pin, you're not supposed to pin waterproof canvas, and you could definitely eyeball it to be straight, but if you just want that extra security, this is not going anywhere. See? So I like that. We're going to step out of the way. And so one eighth of an inch box. I like to really back tack a lot on the corners because that's a uh, uh, that's what's going to have the most stress. And the magnets are keeping it in place. Okay, then we're going to draw a one and a half inch, a one and a half inch mark. Let's see, I'm just going to use a silver pen. So you're just going to draw a one and a half inch mark. And that's going to be the first pocket. From that line, you're going to do four and three fourths. And you're going to do a line. So we, our first line is one and a half. And then from this line, we're going to do um, four and three fourths of an inch. So I'm going to start with this first one. I mean, the second one. And we did the four and four, three fourths. Four and four. <laughs> four and three fourths. And um, I'm going to back tack a couple of stitches, go down my line. 
stop at the end, backtack a little bit, and then go up or down. And go to the one and a half. Back tap, and we're done with our slip pockets. And it's a really cool slip pocket. You can just stick your pencil, your cell phone. And you're good to go. I like slip pockets because my zipper pocket, I'm not going to lie to you, is always open. <laughs> All right, so trim stitches, trim threads. And then this is one more lining to go. We're going on page 26. It is similar to any of Alexis's uh, zipper pockets. You're gonna do the facing one and a half inches, one and one fourth inches down. And then on that facing, you're going to do um, one inch up and a half inch up after that. And then you're going to do the inner, you're going to do the zipper facing by putting it on here, making the box, cutting the um, stitches, and then you're going to attach the lining, which I still have string on. You're going to attach the lining, which gives you a pocket, a nice clean finish inside your pocket. You do leave a hole open because we will be sewing the lining bottoms together through the pocket. So the whole outline of the zipper pocket is on page 25 and 26, and then it extends to um, 27 where you cut off the excess. And now we're on page 28. And we are going to sew the linings right sides together at 3 eighths of an inch, back, back tacking, back stitching really well. I don't know what the phone seems back to. Make sure all our edges are lined up. Okay. Trim. 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 And I'm going to flip to page 29 and I'm going to grab our exterior bag and on the, we're going to grab our zipper and we're going to, basically you're going to take apart this one side and you're going to Fold it over and hand stitch, or you can go in on your machine and like basically clip it on the top and um, you just do a quick facing stitch and you have your zipper. Your zipper needs to be at a 90 degree angle. And Alexis actually does what I do. I just do a couple whip stitches in it and it, it just works out. It makes a clean finish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our center of each bag and this is where that double-sided tape in the inside comes in handy. We're going, I'm going to use this double-sided tape and press open the center. I mean, press open the seam so they're flat. And just trim off the excess.
that not cutting that into that one one inch seam is a, <laughs> it's something I had a note for my second time making the bag because I didn't do it on the first time and it was not fun. It was not fun trying to flatten out those seams. And I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, so removing this tape. All right. So we're gonna grab our white pen and from each end of the, the crease, we're gonna mark one inch. So I have my center mark here. So I'm just going to put a clip there real quickly because I know it's, it's the center and I'm going to grab, I have a one, a one inch little ruler, but <sighs> at last I've done the thing. So I'm going to draw one inch away on all sides, all four sides. Do the same thing, take my center mark right here and on the one inch we're so close I promise you all right I'm going to take one side and I'm going to match to the one inch mark I made and clip. clip. I'm just gonna, yeah, it just is easier to take it apart. Clip. And when we get to the other one inch mark, right where the um the seam is, you're kind of just going to veer off, veer it off, so that way it doesn't fully get attached to the uh, the seam allowance. Like it just gives it a nice towel. So just a small veer like this, it will be super beneficial. So. There's my one inch mark and I just, instead of putting it on the one inch mark and having a tell, let me get a little closer. Okay. So here's my one inch mark. I'll make it a little bit more visible. Hold on, let's see. Focus camera, focus. <laughs> um, there's a one inch mark here and then I'm at the seat. I'm going to slowly take my tape and just kind of just pull it towards the bottom of the back so that way it has a natural angle where it veers off. Okay. And then we're going to just continue to do that. And I'm going to put my other zipper tape up to the side and I am going to stitch the zipper in place. This is why the exterior is floppy, so we can squish it. Put it in place. Okay. Make sure you add a stitch. Zipper ends to the raw edge. And just make sure you're moving the other side of the bag out of the way so you're not accidentally sewing on it.
get it into that area that we're going to smear. Just slightly, I know you're, it's difficult to see, but just point the zipper towards the bottom of the bag and it kind of, while you're in the needle down position, and it'll kind of just kind of go on its own on its own. Backstitch. And then we're just going to do this on the other side. Right side's touching. area that we're going to veer off. Okay. So on this side you will be starting with the area you're going to veer. It's just that's how it goes. Get the bag as flat as you can, making sure that this side is pulled out of its way and it's not getting so under the machine. Ask me how I know. We're going to start off. Make sure zipper tape. And while edges are matching up, Pattern off the table. So now that we got that all done, we're on page 30, we're at the home stretch. We're going to do something that looks super awkward. <laughs> well first, I tell you to do this. Find out which, which side of the bag, bag to you feels like it's, this, it's your, ba your bag. You're either going to have your zipper or zip left to right or um, right to left. So this is how my zipper tape is going to zip, it's going to zip this way. So I want to make sure that the pocket, the zipper pocket, is on the opposite side of where I'm going to have my main bag. And the zippers are kind of just going in the same direction. <laughs> so we're going to just take this lining. It's going to feel super weird. But it's going to feel weird, but then you'll like it. <laughs> it's like kind of cool how this, this gets constructed. Okay, you need to make sure you're, um, you're only putting the line, the zipper lining with the exterior body piece, not the whole entire shell. So bear with me for a second. This again is where the, your center marks are important because your center marks are going to match with the seam that you create it with the lining. So I'm going to start with that because it looks like a hot mess, but I promise you it gets better. Finding your center marks.
oh, we have to fix something. I put this zipper at the center mark and not the one inch mark. Bear with me for just a second. Can you get a seam marker? I want here. Okay, let's do this. I will seam seam rip this real quick and then we'll reinstall it. Because that is an accident. I was looking for the center and I realized I put my zipper on the center. So I'm going to seam it from the inside real quick. As quick as I can. As that would it will it would zip funny. We want everything to be like aligned. It's better to catch it now than put the whole bag together and try to figure out why your bag's going to like one direction more than the other. Everybody in the sewing world makes mistakes. It's part of the learning process. Catching your mistakes is how you become a better sewist. Learning how to fix your mistakes gets even better. We're almost done with taking off this. This is a really thick thread, so I gotta really in there. And we have like eight, like two more stitches. We'll we'll Put this on real relatively quickly in the right location, not the center. Move the excess threads. Let's see. On the one inch mark. Pop a few clips in here. Don't get hit by the seam ripper. Starting off with the rear, and we're going to sew this. Make sure that your um, top panel is not being squished inside and getting so, push it back down. Is going this way. I want to make sure the zipper 
my lining goes the same direction. If it doesn't, nobody's going to notice. It's all like personal preferences. Okay, so with the seam of the lining, we want to match with the center marks of our side panels. That's how you start. Tucking the little towels down so they don't get caught in. Trimming thread so they don't get caught. <laughs> Just clip matching the raw edges of your the body panel, not the exterior side. Or in my case, it's like bright pink. I'm with I'm doing the black with the blue. I have to open up the back more so that way um, any like bunching of the lining or it doesn't feel like it's going to fit, it, it will just maneuver the hidden pocket piece out of the way and everything will start lining up. My dog wanted me to tell. <laughs> She's like the world's heaviest tell. She's half, we got her from Puppy Palooza. Puppy Palooza in Maryland is a rescue, uh, a rescue center. Well, not center, it's like a, a rescue bazaar. Dogs that they normally would put to sleep, like rock wilders. We know she's half rock wilder, we don't know what the other half is, but we all have our, our assumptions, but. We don't know, but she has like extremely long tail, like, and it's heavy, like super, super heavy. <laughs> like, that could be her superpower heavy. She's not, she's not a puppy. She's going to be six in um, September, but she's a puppy to us. She has puppy mannerisms. Let's see. Just spraying out the last of this ease. And just also making sure that none of the hidden pocket main panels get accidentally stuck. No wrinkles on this. This process always seems to take me longer than when I watch people, other people, and I, it's like magic when they do it. <laughs> like, I can't do that. You're, you're creating magic. I'm 
making sure all the ease is, e ease is evenly distributed. And I'm just like, like I said, pressing out the back so that everything, there's no wave, no nothing. And I'll have like a million clips, but we're gonna go. We're gonna sew. We're gonna do sew this at three eighths of an inch. And a back stitch. back towards me as I go because I drew the lines on my side pieces I have like a good reference of three-eighths of an inch because there's the lines there at a time. Take your time to breathe and you know, we'll move a few clips at a time. in the beginning. Bring up the end. <laughs> okay. So, at this point, we're going to just take the lining, give it a, a good tuck, literally stick the lining inside the bag. And we're going to pull down the lining, roll it down, we're going to top stitch the bag. Take a few clips in it. I really like this periwinkle blue canvas, waterproof canvas. I believe I got this at Fabric Warehouse, but if it's not at Fabric Warehouse, then it is one area got like. Okay, so the teeth on this got kind of sucked in, so I'm going to release a couple of stitches on this and then go back over 
the, the so that way it we can sew it up. We'll just with this to the area that I just released the stitches and go over it with the right seam allowance because I think I, I went like almost a half an inch in versus a three eighth of an inch on the back stitch where I release the stitches on both ends. Oh, we're gonna bobbin thread too. It's not a very big area, but I just want to, it would it would have zipped up really weird. Okay, so with this, we don't, I, I don't think I said this, we don't trim the seam allowance, um, the seam allowance on the lining. Roll and press, clip. Still the moving threads. <laughs> Looking for ever the moving threads. Just going over any part that I see with like thread sticking out. I'm just trying to get it now before I start top stitch. I don't want like the threads to be caught in the top stitch. That happens to me sometimes. I'm not. I'm really bad at trimming threads. Okay, as this one right here is curvy. I'm going to. We're on page. We're on page thirty. I apologize. And we're gonna to top stitch. I'm going to 
then my 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 pink when the top stitch you be at weird angles. You're going one eighth of an inch all the way around. Make sure no pink spreads by the way. I would soak this inside out first, but this has a wide mouth so it can maneuver fairly easily under a sewing machine. Or if you have a domestic and you have a free arm, this is like this is the time to use utilize that. Use a stiletto or a purple thing or um, whatever you have around you, you just need to get closer to the needle without your finger near it. I swear this one piece of thread looks like literally like a Push your bag, it's gonna be fine. Okay, almost around it. In the bag. Right. All right. Okay. We're on page 31. We're almost there. There's only 35 pages. We're going to Okay, so if we're going to do a handmade tag, this is the time to do it um, if you wish to install one. Okay, so I do wish to install one, and I think I want it. First, I want it in the center, but I think I might have it on the side. So I'm going to take my logo, and I'm going to mark where I want it. And I'm going to take an X-Acto knife. Um, very carefully put my hand through the lining, moving it out of the way. And putting in, see my hand's right here. So I'm just going to clip to hold 
very carefully with the X-Acto knife and not, not get my fingers. That's the key. to stick my logo, make sure it's right sides up. And I'm going to get the back of my washer. And stick that in there too. In the back. And then I'm going to put a piece of like foam tape. So that way I don't cut my hands. When I'm sticking in, when I'm sticking in the actual interfacing, it's just a piece of foam that you get at you can get at your local hardware place. That it comes in like the insulation section and a couple of few other places. I use duct tape a lot too, but when I run out, like I don't have duct tape now, I I use this. All right, so we're gonna install. I installed that and then we're going to use our, our um, stabilizer. So Alexis is using, um, what is she using? She is using one layer of Peltex in the bag that she made. If for super structure, you can use two. I am using one layer of Decoville light. No, sorry. One, two layers of Decoville light and one layer of um, Bouncy Firm. Bouncy Firm is another um, interface that I particularly love from Serial Bag Maker. I use it in a lot of my bags. Um, it has like nice structure. So we're going to roll this like this, like kind of like a burrito. We're going to then stick it in. It's kind of awkward, but you got this. You're going to stick it inside here and then unroll it so that it fits in the corners. Of your bag. Oh yeah, this is this is gonna come out nice. So I'm going to just push that interfacing into this as much as I can, and I'm just gonna put a couple of clips there. Because when we do the top stitching, you want your interfacing to be nice and taut against the seam. Oh yeah, this is going to be a really pretty bag. I'm really loving this. All right, so let me do the other side and then we're going to get to some top stitching. We're not going to back stitch. We're going to leave tells because we're going to put the, um, we're going to put the top stitching threads inside inside of, um, for now inside of the <laughs> lining super awkward putting this in but it's worth it I promise and you just kind of unroll it 
try to get a corner, the corners to meet. It is a lot of fussing, but I promise you, um, once you get all the corners in and it's all flat, it's going to be amazing. This one corner is like giving me the hardest time. Just trying to get them to the corners. I'm just going to push this up a little bit more and then pin it, clip it. And Okay, so you see, you see me jostling this around, and it, like I said, it's worth it in the end. The end results shows all the hard work you put in. This is so cute. I love how it opens up. You have your nice hidden pockets. Let's start top stitching. So we're going to stitch in from one of the one of the inside pieces right here. So that would be the, like or right through here. So you can pull the threads from the back and it will look like it's seamless. So start in the corner. And we're going to do one eighth of an inch. You can go um, a little bigger stitch length if you want, or you can try even a small one. I mean, it all depends on what you like, what, what you're going for. So remember, no back stitching. You stop, make sure your needle's down, and then you pivot. Okay. 
we're going to top stitch just continue where we're on the other side now. I like how wide this purse is. It has like a big mouth opening. So I don't know, it just it's really cool. You gotta see if you can even need a frame for it to do this, but somehow you don't. Alright, so long tails. We're going to pull the the threads forward. We're going to take, so we're going to take the threads that are on the outside and bring them to the inside. So you grab one and I use, I have just like a whole um, quilt pin that I use that I just keep on my magnet and then you grab, you all, now all your threads are to the back. I just keep one of them near me at all times. So what I do is I try, I always unsuccessfully but I always try um, to thread two of the threads together and then I wind up just doing one at a time. Like, look at this lucky ducky no about it. <laughs> Alright so I'm going to I'm gonna push this thread into the lining and use my finger not stab my finger to bring I stab myself up bring these through and then I'm going to do the same thing for these two and then I'll tie it off. Okay, maybe you guys are my lucky charm. Okay, let's see. Not to lose it, but then it will be even better. Stick my hand inside. Pull the needle through. Pull the needle up, and then you just go inside, and you're going to tie off these threads. Like you go loop it like three times. measure and just leave the threads as is. So what we're going to do now is take the lining, you're going to put your hand in the pocket, you're going to pull out your pocket. Now you're going to take it and grab both lining pieces. So what we're going to do is we want to line, make sure we clip both ends so we know we, we have them. And you're going to box the corners. You're going to use the same stitch length of 3 8 of an inch.
to discard two. And we're going to box the corners. Just pulling the fabric nice and taut. And then I just flatten the seams, having a seam allowance going on either direction, both directions, so that way it's evenly distributed. And three eighths of an inch is our seam allowance. Do it on the other side, box the seams. Three eighths of an inch, back stitch, and let's see. trim all this, the threads, and then what we're going to do is we're going to shove the lining back in, and we're going to close off the zipper, I can pop a few pins or clips, clips, because I'm using waterproof pins. You can put a label in there, or you could, I mean, no one really looks in there, but if you want it, you could put, definitely put a label inside. I think it's cute, so, you know, another place to have your logo. And then we're going to tuck our pocket in. I'm just pushing the little points into the corner. And we have our lining. So we have our zipper pocket and we have our slip pocket, our back. In our front. Okay, we're at the we're almost done. This is the easiest and funnest steps. Okay, it, it is easy. It can be difficult. So you're gonna get your um, handle pieces and you're going to fold them in fours like you normally do. You, I'm going to use this one as an example. You would take the, the the this is a four inch strap. So you would take this and you would fold it in on itself, leaving a one eighth gap. Then you would take the clips. And you stitch along one eighth of an inch on across both sides. From there, there's measurements on this. Um, from each handle of the raw end, it needs to go, a hole needs to be punched and measured at one and a half inches and two and a half inches. Okay, so I'm one of those people when I get measurements, I get stuck. So what I did is I took her pattern piece and created a template. So on the raw edge, I put this and I knew this hole is at one and a half and this one is at two and a half. So all of my straps have the same thing. So you could do the same thing I did. It's a one inch strip and I just punched the holes in it. So that way I can say, hey, this is one and a half, this is two and a half. And it was just easier for me to lay it down and do it that way. So now we're on page 34 and we need measurements on this. So, it needs to go in three inches, and you need to scale the edge down from, um, three inches from the edge, two and a half inch mark, and a one and a half inch mark. And she shows you the positions on them. Again, with me, and I have just like a regular piece of paper, and I created a template 
with the arrows on it that have the measurements going three in, three inches in and one, one and a half and two and a half. So that way I can mark them without having to like repeatedly measure. And then I did this, I put it on the opposite side. So that way I don't have to flip the flip it. You could just mark and go. And then, so what I'm gonna do, cause I noticed that when I flip it, these have a tendency of like kind of bleeding. So I'm gonna try this first before I try um, pounding a hole. Cause this goes, the second one goes through um, your lining. So it's a lot of layers it's going through. So what I try to do is I try this. I got this from a leather shop and I know they have it on Amazon. Sometimes this works. And sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna try it on, I know it should work on the top part. Yeah, one of those days. It's okay. Everything keeps going. So I have that top one punched through. That was a good punch. And I'm just going to get a needle and poke any of the extra little bits that may prevent it from punching. That was a clean hole, so I'm gonna go back and do it on this side just to, just to see. Okay, I got a clean hole there too. So I'm going to hook it on this side, and before I punch the hole, the holes, I gotta mark them. I have my arrows telling me which way to go. So you're marking, you're going to three inches, and you're going to be marking, at, you're going into the edge three inches, and you're going to be marking one and a half inches down and two and a half inch down. And I'm bringing my little paper template over and doing the same. And before I leave your paper template, I'm going to clip them to the back of my pattern. So that way, when I remake this bag, I can be like, oh yeah, I made it. A little template so I could punch holes a little bit easier. Plan B was me pounding. I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know what time it is, and I have a funny feeling it wouldn't be appreciated to my neighbors. <laughs> like, what are you doing, Noah? Let's see. Don't give up on me now. Okay, you got one really clean hole out of that. I got a clean hole out of that too. It's, it's, I, I'm thinking you guys are lucky because normally this is a total mess for me. And I would have to go um, use my little drill bits and pound and I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> okay, and last punch. And I know it's scary punching holes through your bag that you just made. But it's worth it, I promise. Yep, this thing just sticks with me. And then it pops up randomly. I gotta find like a better um, method. <laughs> Just one more hole in here, just to... Okay. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to rivet these in place. I got my rivet from a small mom and pop shop called Mikus and Margo. They're on Etsy. I have to tell you, they're amazing. I, during COVID, when their shop was closed for a while, um, I needed some, you know, rivets. And they, like, they mailed them out to me. They did a PayPal invoice, the whole nine yards. They're just, they have, they have a lot of cool dyes, and they're just really great people. So you could put purse tabs at the end of your bags. I'm putting this one. Here. You can also use your handheld for the first hole, but definitely not for the second. You probably could. But I think it'll be just like a lot of squishing. Okay, this little mm -hmm. So I'm going to use the large rivets. Thread the meet the rivet to the front and have it come out and place a cap on it. Then I'm going to set it with the rivet press. I feel like the, this goes better when you're at a corner because you can stick the whole bag in, but we'll make it work. I'm going to slide a D-ring on this side. Should I did that before I put the first thing on. Okay, well, I'm just not going to put a ring on. Because <laughs> I, I uh, can't slide it in. Because um, I have this. Oh, I could take, I don't have to be full. Um, so I could just unscrew one. Because like, you put one D ring on um, each side. So that way, if you want to have a crossbody, you can add one. But the straps are long enough where you, you really don't need one. But it's always nice to have options. There's also, I'll give you some other places where I think you can put a D-ring on and have options. Let me slide this in and then put this cap back on. Right on. That's how it works. These baby screws, they kill me. Like, they go missing so fast. I'm just screwing it in. 
And if you want to, when you're done screwing in after you put your D-rings on, <laughs> um, you can put like a drop of free track or turn lock in it and it will just keep the screws on. The screws are not going to go anywhere without it, but if you just want that extra security, that's what you're going to have to do. And then I'm going to thread my second hole. It's awkward. <laughs> it's an awkward thing to do, but it works out in the end. And I'm going to put a rivet cap on here. You can do the set the rivets manually too. I like to do that, especially when it's in a, like I said, an awkward position. There's only so much position the rivet can get into, but. So I'm going to do the same thing on this part of the strap. I'm going to thread it. You're going to need the extra large or large. I tried a medium and it just, the, the material is too thick for me. You can get all your rivets from Emmeline bags. Um, Zero Bag Maker has them. Tandy Leather. There's a lot of places you can get your rivets at. I know um, even Amazon has extra large rivets, like the ones that are like, I guess not Amazon brand, but distributed from Amazon. Let's set this, these two rivets. that number two and a half in there. <laughs> All right, so we have one side and then we're going to do this side. So if one D rings on this side, you need to put it on the opposite side of the other bag so that way you, again, if you want to have, um, if you want to have um, a crossbody. Then you have that option. Hands free. And show <laughs> like like total hands free access. Putting this on. Putting making sure the strap is going the same direction. Sorry that. Slide it in. You can put fray check or um, turn lock on this as well after you put your DVD in. Okay. So I'm going to thread this.
do the same thing. I might have to get two other large. I'll get this one quick. Tuck these two, and then we're on, like we're on, like we're at the home stretch. We put we're gonna install the zipper um, pull and install the zipper end. Just the meat in the fabric. Just making this hole a little more to find. Super small. <laughs> like the holes for me are not not fully punching out all the time so I have to remove like the insides of the bag <laughs> and then go all right so let's put this in and then we're 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 almost done no more rivets no more zipper installations this to the side and I grab a pattern but I'm excited. Okay. We did page 33. We did page 34. Now we're going to just install the zipper. I'm really usually good at this part, me and zippers. <laughs> Oops. 
just clean up with it. You can use a zipper jig or a fork or whatever is easier for you. Just make sure the zipper's even. Let's see if I can find my zipper that just blew. <laughs> Okay, so I over here. Oh, hold on one second, I'm trying to get to it. I like normally do not struggle. I can just like slide these things in. It's because I was I was happy about threading my needle. I think that's it. <laughs> Let me just take the bag and I'm gonna stick it on my lap way. <laughs> All right. So, what I can normally do is I'll just trim the threads. I'll get some double sided tape. I'll put it in the middle and I'll fold one end on itself and then grab some more tape and put it in the middle again and fold this end on itself. And then when I get my zipper, Many torches, but just tuck them up now. Green. The edges. It would help if I remove the um <laughs> the screw. Just kind of thread it in there. You can put glue inside if you wish. Just 
turn the screw, and by the ink, by the boom, you're done. So, this bag is absolutely gorgeous. It's about 18 inches wide, 14 inches tall, and five inches in depth. This has a nice Just poking out my my seams. Just roll the seams so you can. It has like a nice and wide opening. And that's it. We have a beautiful bag with a unique print. It's cool zipper installations. If you wanted to put a tassel or your key chains there, you can. There's a zipper pocket on the inside. You have your slip pocket. And it's just a, a very unique shape. Oh my god, I really love this bag. This this bag can be so many things. It's so posh upscaled. So what I'm going to do is I'm about to call this video night because we did everything in here. If you have any questions about the pattern, please comment below and I will definitely answer it. If you have um, questions in general about anything sewing topic, please let me know and I'll be more than willing to assist you in any way I can. Comment, like, thumbs up and share. I would greatly appreciate it. And this is the Monica carryall bag. And I highly suggest you to buy this pattern and make it. You can do it because I could do it. I hope you have a really good night and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.